to get an instant notification of the latest ABB, aka Astro Boo Baby, video upload. Please subscribe, click on this bell icon, and check this box and save. What's up, my beautiful Cosmic family members and friends? I've been contemplating for quite a while as to whether I should do a video about this subject matter versus maybe blogging about it. And I actually pitched the suggestion or the idea to the members in a forum on AlistairWooBaby.net. And everyone pretty much agreed that I should go ahead and make a video about it and make the focus about the spiritual and physical and metaphysical ramifications of such an act and to also share a story personal story that I've had regarding this subject matter which is 99.9% .9 of what I present it's what I have experienced what I remember what I recall what I have observed now let me get into a little bit about zoophilia and bestiality. Actually, a lot, because I do have a lot to say. Um, I want to read something to you guys really quick. All right. Zoophilia, bestiality. Zoophilia is a prophilia evolving. I'm sorry. Zoophilia is a paraphilia involving a sexual fixation on non-human animals. Bestiality is a cross-species sexual activity between human and non-human animals. The terms are often used interchangeably, but some researchers make a distinction between the attraction, which is zoophilia, which they're trying to now classify it as a sexual orientation, and the act, which is actually involving penetration or some kind of sexual contact with an animal, bestiality. Although sex with animals is not outlawed in some countries, in most countries, bestiality is illegal under animal abuse laws or laws dealing with crimes against nature. And it's important that I read that as a backdrop for those of us who may not be familiar with uh, bestiality and zoophilia. Now, where should I start with this? Let me start with how I came into the conscious awareness that people were doing this. Um, I was a teenager in high school and I used to catch the bus from the school to like a halfway point from where I live, about, I would say about three miles from where I live. And instead of transferring and catching another bus to get to the street to which I live, I used to get off at a halfway point and I used to walk about three miles uh, by way of a railroad track that used to run through uh, my neighborhood. And I used to, and this railroad track would carry. It would lead through a lot of wooded area, but I was fearless at that time. I shouldn't have been doing that, but I didn't think of anything of it. I just wanted exercise, but I didn't um, really want to come in contact with a lot of people along my walks because I was a very shy, quiet, introverted person at that time. So there was a time when it would be nothing for me to walk uh, these train tracks and I would see at a distance people uh, pick me. Clearly, yeah, they could be couples, but my intuition would tell me these would be drug addicts bringing their tricks and johns, you know, near the tracks, and they would be doing whatever they're doing at a distance. And of course, when they see someone coming, they will go to another location. This particular day, I was walking along the uh, railroad track, and I had come across this area where there's a, a a, a large ditch and this ditch was I would say you know, approximately like eight feet 
where, the, the, where this train track ran across. There was a ditch going down a hill. There was a ditch and there was a giant fence that separated that ground level ditch from more um, pasture to a main highway. But again, there were a lot of trees and, and bushes along the way and in the area. So I come up and I see what appeared to be a man lying on his, I'm looking down at this angle. So he was, he appeared to be lying on his right hand side. All I saw was the, the back side of him. And he, he appeared to be struggling or adjusting from the waist area. I couldn't see the face. Again, this is just looking down and seeing someone lying on their side. So I'm only able to see the back side of this person. And I yelled down at the bottom of the ditch and I said, excuse me, sir, are you okay? And the guy just turned his head. And he, when he turned his head, it was an, a man who appeared to be 60 plus. He had on um, very, very thick glasses. So there was obviously an issue with sight and he, I remember he turned around and he said, no, leave me alone, go about your business or something like that. And I said, sir, I'm just trying to make sure you're okay. Are you okay? And he said, I told you, go mind your business, go about your business. So I said, sir, I'm just trying to, before I can say anything else, the man gets up. Now, this is where I see what's really going on. The man gets up, his penis was hanging out, he was semi-erect, he got up and, he, and I saw that there was a, a dog, a, a, a mackle, a mackle dog, it was a female, how I know it was a female, she was lying on her back with her legs up and she was panting really, really hard. This was on a summer's day by the uh, no, I'm sorry. This was on a warm day. It wasn't a summer. It was it was on a, a very warm day. She was lying on her back and she was panting really hard and her legs were open with his, and he had his member out. So immediately I saw or what I was seeing was this man he was trying to enter vaginally penetrate the dog from the side without laying on top of her and obviously crushing her. Now, obviously this was his dog because the dog was just lying there cooperating. This was clearly not some stray dog. So as he got up and being frustrated that by me interfering in what it is that he was doing, he pulled, I saw the back end of a gun. He had a, a small gun in his pocket and I just ran, I ran and I ran and by the time I slowed down and looked back, I saw him standing and just putting the gun back, turning to go back down to where he was. And I went home and I told my mo I told my mother, my aunt, one of my aunts just so happened to be over there. And I told my mother what happened. My mother at that time said she was 40 years old and she said, no, my 40 years, I haven't even seen anything like that. But of course, leave it up to me to see some crap like that. But again, I understand that a lot of the bizarre things that I witnessed in my life was a part of the journey so that I can come forth and share with you with uh, what I'm about to share with you now. I was working at, in, um, as a summer job. There was a young guy who worked with me. He had a really big dog. I want to say it was like one of the really hairy dogs. Uh, the, the dogs that grow really big with the long hair, I can't think of the name right now. He would talk about how large his female dog vagina would swell up when she's in heat. And then he jokingly said, man, one time I was so horny, I went on and fucked her. And he said, ha, ha. and then the guy, he said this in front of the other guys. And the other guys just, they thought it was funny. They kind of joke and laugh it off. But then he said, no, nah, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. And here I am sitting here with the gift of, of discernment and intuition. He was not lying. He was actually telling the truth. This thing is far more common than we would like to think or believe. People are having sexual encounters with their dogs, with their cats, their horses, you name it. It, run the ga it runs the gamut. Now, some people, it's, a lot of us already know that in some countries, this is 
culturally accepted. I was when I was doing my research to make this video, I come across uh, documentaries where it is culturally normal and accepted for young boys and men to have sex with donkeys. Now let that one simmer. When I watched that, it really gave me a revelation about the term jackass. So I'm now I'm literally looking and thinking and feeling that's why they call donkeys jackass because it's an ass for people to jack off or jack in. You get it? So in this country, the men are encouraged to have sex with donkeys and particularly in Colombia. I mean, you guys can look this stuff up. Everything that I'm saying in terms of the cultural norms. And, and the cultural expectations with people using uh, female animals as a training ground or preparation for um, sex with um, humans is, is out there. So there's um, this expectation and pressure in a lot of these countries for young boys to prepare for uh, intimacy and sexual contact with other females by way of the donkey. And there's also a lot of sheep, people having sex with sheep. How do we think, or how do you guys think they came to the realization with the sheep condoms, the sheepskin condoms that are out there? You, you guys think that was just some pie in the sky revelation of someone? Clearly, someone along the way. Uh, figured out or came to the conclusion that the vagina of a sheep feels the same or identical to a vagina, a human, a female vagina. Now, I want to get into the spiritual and ethical aspects of this. First of all, as I've talked about before, there's more to sex than procreation. Now, you guys may say, well, oh, it's, it's just a dumb animal. You can't reproduce. What's the big deal? It's just sex and all this crap. People have been writing to me when we cr clearly know that that's just not the case. It's ignorance. Sex is creative life force energy. Every time a man ejaculates in a living organism, be it a female, a male, a dog, cat, or anything, there is something that is going to manifest. Now, it could be a positive, it could be a negative, but depending on the situation, yeah, there could be dynamics in place that can neutralize that situation. But when you're talking about animals and children who don't have the level of maturity and the level of consciousness and the, the spiritual aptitude to handle and to decipher and to discern whether or not they would want to consent to the potentials that could come along with someone in, in injecting or ejaculating their semen, their bloodline, their life force, their spiritual attachments. We're talking about an ethical situation. We're talking about a non-consensual situation. And so there are cause and effects to everything and we must start thinking about the cause and effect of doing something like that. I don't care what consenting adults do. It's none of our business, really. But we should really raise an eyebrow when it, especially when it comes to children and people pushing their will upon the weak and those who are not conscious enough to know the consequences, be they spiritual, physical, or what have you, metaphysical, of such an act. Now, I've talked about in the past spiritual attachments. Animals have uh, spiritual attachments as well. We have our spiritual attachments. People don't stop and think that, well, me projecting and injecting my, my life force energy, my blood, my semen into this animal and my attachments could have prolonged effects to that species. Because, yes, we all have an immune system. An animal have an immune system and organisms to protect itself that we don't. 
So when we do things like this, we are opening ourselves up to foreign germs and organisms that that animal had protection against that we may not and vice versa. So and just as we may be projecting some impurity and some spiritual negative energy onto that animal that that animal could pass on down their bloodline into other animals, we are absorbing and taking from them and bringing that into the human genome. So you guys want to know where a lot of these diseases are coming from? These sexually transmitted diseases. A lot of these reproductive issues that we are having. And speaking of reproduction, through my research, and I even meditated on this, there are, the animals are mutating, because this is so common, it has been going on for thousands of years, that the animals are starting to adapt and mutate to the point where we keep this up, they will literally be giving birth to a cross species. Because keep in mind, right now, that's not commonly possible, but everything evolves, everything adapts, everything adjusts to its environment, its climate. So if we are subjecting animals to a climate where they're constantly being um, raped, basically, and, 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 and receiving sperm and semen from hum the human species, that's going to have some serious domino effect and that animal is it, it will eventually evolve to adapt and adjust to that. The same thing with women who allow another species to ejaculate semen inside their womb. And we wonder why humans seem to be, a lot of us seem to be devolving instead of going forward. We seem to be going more like we should be crawling on all fours and not communicating a, a clear thought, let alone a, a, a clear sentence. I don't want to come across as if I'm being um, judgmental. Well, hell, maybe I am. Really, when it's all said and done, this is not a good thing. It, it, it just isn't. Now, I'm very clear that there are people who are into this stuff. They are very clear on what they're doing and why they're doing it and the ramifications. These are people who enjoy the, the chaotic and the, the, the dark and treacherous things that can come out of such use. I'm not talking to you guys because you pretty much made your decisions, but I'm talking mainly to those of us who are engaging in these things and may not have thought further than Jeff buffing a good nut and getting off. There's far more going on in this exchange than we realize spiritually, physically, metaphysically. This is far more common than we can begin to imagine because I've sat and I meditated and I connected with the universe and it is very common, which made me, it compelled me to finally do this video now. All right. So you guys who would like to join in the conversation, share stories, your revelations regarding this matter, please jot it down below. That's it for now. Stay tuned for the next installment. Thank you so much for your time.